Thomas Vinterberg's Festen, or alternatively known as The Celebration, is a dogma film focusing on the 60th birthday celebration of a father whose family hides a shocking traumatic past that is inevitably to be revealed. Distant family relations and the father's own children arrive at a family-owned lodge for the celebration, with Christian especially prepared to deliver an unforgettable toast. The film effectively delivers a powerful revelation, a devastating truth, and unfortunately is made Met with initial disbelief, until this devastating truth is confirmed by a second perspective, a deceased relative Christian's sister Linda. While also developing to the shocking moment of revelation, the film also develops an uncomfortable sense of uncertainty. Once allegations have been made, who is to be believed? The film covers incredibly dark subject matter such as child abuse, suicide and violence, which while uncomfortable as a viewing experience, is essential to be acknowledged. Upon arriving at the lodge, Christian is greeted by his sister Helen, but Helen is frustrated with Michael, their brother, for not attending their deceased sister's funeral, but they quickly revert back to a childlike playful fighting, a playful physicality. Christian has attended his father's 60th birthday celebration not to celebrate, but to deliver an unforgettable toast, a toast that should not be taken lightly. Christian's intentions are only made aware to a select few, Pia, a waitress, and Kim, the head chef who wishes to see Christian's plan executed smoothly. Helen, upon receiving the bedroom where her sister's body was found after committing suicide, begins to find little symbols such as a small arrow and a fish drawn on the wall. With the assistance of a lodge staff member, Helen finds a way to connect with her deceased sister. Even though she is no longer with her, Helen recognises that there is a game in place where Helen must find clues indicating her location, growing warmer with each new clue. This being a game they used to play as children, it seems seems innocent and sweet to find this way of connecting with her sister, but upon discovering the goal of the game, a letter, Helen's spirits are devastated. Stifling her cries, she hides the letter away. Within that letter is a hard truth to accept. Christian and his father have a one-to-one -one where the ice is broken through a dirty joke from the father, and an attempt is made to catch up with his son. This casual interaction offers a sense that things are well. However, upon Christian's first toast towards his father, he reveals to everybody a lie story about he and Linda, as children used to play a prank in that exact dining room, where they would hide things in people's food, run and hide, laughing along. He remembers fondly how infectious their laughter was, and how it would usually get them caught, but with no real repercussions. The tone darkens when Christian admits that it was much more dangerous when their father would prepare for a bath. Christian admits that he and Linda were raped by their father. The atmosphere is dampened, but only temporarily, as people assume Christian's speech was a distasteful joke. Meeting Kim in the kitchen, he expresses that he will leave, but Kim, disappointed, knows that Christian hasn't had the intended impact. With Kim's encouragement, Christian attempts another toast while the waiters steal the car keys of the guests so they cannot leave. This is a truth that needs to be heard. Christian and his father have another one-to-one. -one. The tone is similar to the first. The father admits that he doesn't remember anything like which Christian had suggested, and that his memory must be fading in his older age, but Christian dismisses it, and suggests that he didn't realise what he was saying, being pushed to his limits with a lack of sleep and constant working. This interaction seems to suggest a misunderstanding, however Christian is attempting to buy himself some time for a second attempt at delivering this revelation to the guests who respect his father so highly. Michael, Christian's aggressive brother, is given the responsibility from his father to make sure the event goes smoothly. With this prompt, it can be assumed that the father understands that Christian is likely to make a second attempt at revealing this traumatic past. Christian announces the second toast, to the man who killed my sister, a murderer, he shouts. Many guests become frustrated and wish to leave, but of course cannot. Christian is berated by his father in their final one-to-one. -one. His father suggests that Christian is a warped soul, and that he wouldn't enjoy having his darker side revealed to the guests. 
Christians. Christian's lack of success with women, his past of burning other children's toys in front of them, how Linda didn't write anything to Christian before her suicide. All these aspects detail a traumatic past of Christian, but it begins implementing a sense of uncertainty. Who is telling the truth here? Is Christian simply a troubled soul? Or are these issues of Christian's consequences of suffering with trauma of child abuse? A toast from Christian's mother, Elsie, reveals that Michael was sent away to different schools to study, suggesting that if a history of child abuse exists within this family. Michael would unlikely be aware of it. Helen's success and frequent travelling is also commended. This woman, who may have also been unaware to possible trauma, may have only just discovered the dark past through a set-up game from her deceased sister. Christian is commended for his ability to tell stories since his childhood, and even referencing an old imaginary friend of his. However, Elsie adds that Christian must be aware of how to differentiate fiction from reality, a suggestion that calls back to Christian's earlier outbursts. Upon prompting him to apologise to his father, Christian reluctantly stands in front of the guests and calls out his own mother for turning a blind eye to the abuse he suffered, even stating she had walked in on him being raped and did nothing. Although Elsie may not have physically abused her children, enabling her husband's actions would be unforgivable. Michael escorts Christian out of the building, beating him in an alleyway and leaving him in the forest. This is Michael's aggressive brand of making sure the event goes smoothly. Following his father's orders, when asked about Christian's whereabouts by Helen, Michael lies and suggests Christian went back home, assuming that it is unlikely Christian is to return. Pia, the waitress, fond of Christian, discovers Lynn Linda's letter, which Helen found and begins to understand the heaviness of this entire situation. With her assistance, Christian returns the letter back to Helen during Helen's reluctant participation in a celebratory dance. A mutual understanding is made between the two. Helen knows she must read this letter from Linda. Reading the letter aloud during a toast to her father, it is revealed that Linda committed suicide due to being haunted by the trauma of being raped by her father. The atmosphere is now dampened completely. What Christian has been saying all along has been confirmed from another perspective, and it is more difficult to disregard it, despite the father's attempts to undermine it. When Christian asks his father why he did what he did, the father simply confirms it with a resentful remark. It's all you were good for, he says. This confirming the traumatic history and suffering of Christian and Linda, dismissing Christian as a person and showing no remorse for his disgusting actions towards his children. Michael, discovering this, attempts to resolve things through aggression, calling out his father, pulling him by the hair and beating him. He later says that he will never see his grandkids again. And the next morning, when the father attends the breakfast with the guests, he delivers a speech expressing a sense of remorse for his actions. But this is too little too late. What damage he has done is it irreparable and unforgivable, and his speech feels less regretful of his actions and more regretful that his actions were brought to public attention. Upon finishing the speech, stating he knows nobody will contact him ever again, Michael walks towards his father and congratulates him on his speech, but also prompting his father to leave while everyone else enjoys their breakfast. The father leaves alone, a powerful statement that illustrates that his actions are not and never will be forgiven. The father is not welcome here, nor will he ever be welcome to sit at the same table as his children or grandchildren. In conclusion, Christian takes multiple attempts to convince people of this traumatic past he has kept to himself for too long, but eventually succeeds removing the power and respect that his father once demanded. Thomas Winterberg's Festen, despite being an uncomfortable viewing experience, is an essential one. The film holds immense relevancy when considering how the Me Too movement encourages victims of abuse to speak out and open up. Christian is a character who must have sat in silence for a long time, unable to even talk to Helen or Michael, and upon Linda's suicide was probably always aware of what had caused her to take her own life. It's a devastating truth that is hard to accept, but victims of trauma do not always speak up. With Feston, we as viewers see the success of a victim speaking out, and although he is met with criticisms, assault and disbelief to quieten him, Christian remained persistent indicating the importance of victims speaking out against abuse.